The following is an ESG 360 video. I'm here today with Christoph Bertrand, Senior Analyst covering data protection and compliance uh, issues for ESG. So Christoph, this is a very interesting time. As we sit here today, we're mere days away from a, uh, a deadline that has had many regulators, end user organizations, and uh, technology vendors uh, very uh, interested, concerned, involved for many years now. And that is the compliance deadline for the EU GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. So remind our viewers, what is the GDPR and why does it matter? So first of all, it's a regulation, meaning that it is far reaching. It applies to every member state and there is no uh, local or national adoption phase such uh, as what you would have with the directive. So it's a big deal. Secondly, it is really global in its impact. Uh, if you do business uh, in Europe, very likely you will be impacted by GDPR, meaning you have to comply. So if I'm a multinational organization anywhere in the world with business operations in Europe or the uh, ownership of personal data of EU citizens, I have to be worried about this. Absolutely, and it's going to be quite a challenge. There are a number of articles in the regulation that apply to how you're supposed to manage the data, what you're supposed to do with it, and more importantly, the fundamental aspect of it is that the individuals, you and me, if we are European residents, own the data and have rights. So it goes really far beyond just what you can do with it. It's really about the fundamental ownership of personal information and the identifiers that go with it. Certainly an issue that's been in the news in this side of the pond exactly. in recent weeks. Absolutely. So we'll see how this one plays out. It will be very interesting. In general, what are your observations on the level of preparedness amongst those multinational organizations or businesses that are going to need to comply with, with this regulation? Uh, it's very scary uh, based on the uh, 2018 IT spending intentions uh, that uh, we just conducted. Mm -hmm. 82%, I believe, are either concerned or very concerned about GDPR. So mm -hmm. clearly this level of concern turns into a level of preparedness, which is very, very low, about 11%. Mm. So believe you know, only about ready. one out of 10 believe they're, they're ready to go. One out of 10, meaning nine out of 10 are not. Correct, correct. The simple math applies here, but what it means also is because of the uh, type of issues that it could bring to your business in terms of penalties, mm -hmm. GDPR is getting people's attention. Right. And remind us what some of those penalties may be. So depending on the size of the business, it will be a percentage of your revenue. Uh, clearly, there are a, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stake here and not a lot of carrot, but I think the real intent here is to improve the level of data privacy and how data is managed, which of course comes at a, at a price, which is one of the concerns we've also uncovered in the uh, survey. Clearly, one of the top concerns is going to be the cost of uh, changing a number of processes, uh, including those in data protection. Right. Now, those are the concerns of those that will have to implement the necessary technology process workflow to make this happen. But certainly, the going back to the teeth of, of this regulation in terms of the potential financial penalties, that explains the level of executive concern we're seeing among the uh, survey respondents in our research. Yeah, exactly. And but what's interesting here is you look at GDPR and has, again, a number of articles, including some that clearly state uh, you have to protect your data, you have to inform uh, the uh, users or your customers in case of a breach. It's a 72-hour time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the right to be for forgotten, which is Article 17, where it says, as an individual, I have the right to know, first of all, what you know about me, whether you're the controller of the data, meaning you're the creator of the data about me, or the processor. Maybe you're a marketing firm that's using data and uh, doing some, some uh, additional uh, value creation on top of mm -hmm. data that's been created by somebody else. And I also have the right to be forgotten under certain circumstances where I want you to delete my data. That's complicated because what if there's a backup? Yes, exactly. Well, that's actually, let's, go, let's go down that path for a second. So you mentioned Article 17, the right to be forgotten. You cover data protection technologies and the whole point of data protection and backup and recovery and replication and technologies and processes like that is I'm going to make multiple copies of that data right. in case for compliance or even maybe uh, for test dev and disaster recovery, all kinds of use cases. How are companies going to be able to 
uh, cope with this need to, if I have to forget your data, doing that across all my copies of that data? Well, so it's a very complex um, question and answer. A few things first. If the data is neatly organized and you know where the data that's affected by GDPR is, and well, then it's not that difficult, right? You can go and look at what the expiration dates should be. You can go manage that pretty neatly. The problem is, do you even know where that data is? And that's one of the top concerns we uncovered in the survey. Uh, another concern is, how do you manage that then? So the right to be forgotten is really going to be complex from that perspective. The real question will be, how do you manage the recoveries should data that's supposed right. to be forgotten still be there? How do you manage access control? Uh, there are a number of other uh, dimensions to the regulation around uh, encryption, around uh, protecting the data from being breached, around the ability to just read the data or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so the good news is there are lots of great tools in backup and recovery that help. But I would say data classification, it's probably going to be one of the big ones of the key things. Uh, yeah, moving sure. forward. Okay. So Christoph, clearly there's a lot of work to be done here. A lot of work has been done in the preceding months and years, really. But for those organizations that aren't there yet or still have work to do, what would be some of the recommendations and best practices that you would advise uh, those firms to embrace? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it very simple. First things first, make sure the board, the executives are, are, are ready to go, ready to fund the effort. It's a compliance um, effort. It should not be neglected. Uh, the larger enterprises probably do this all the time, have large teams, not a big deal for them necessarily. I think in the mid-market, it's going to be more of a challenge where mm -hmm. you now have to do things that you are not uh, quite ready for originally. Sure. Uh, I will say that uh, Go back and understand where your data is, is exactly located, classify your data, and revisit your backup processes. Now, for the vendor community, the technology vendors that are providing uh, the solutions to help organizations with those data classification challenges, for example, uh, backup and recovery uh, uh, requ request requirements, what advice do you have for those firms as well? So I think it's already started. Um, my advice would be education. So we've, we're seeing a lot of that going on in the market. But I think there are still some uh, question marks around how every piece of technology really fits, especially when it comes to backup and recovery. As I said, there are some great things that backup and recovery solutions can do to support GDPR. But there are some things that are just not a good fit. So being clear about where you fit, what recommendations you have for your customers. And I think there will be some technology uh, improvements that will be needed or additional features that will be needed uh, to combine uh, backup and recovery, data classification, and, and just good management uh, of that critical data for uh, the compliance regulation. Great. Great advice. Well, thank you. Uh, this was fantastic. For more information on GDPR and other compliance and data protection issues, visit ESGglobal.com.